If today's gospel sounds familiar, then congratulations, you were paying attention 16 weeks ago on Ash Wednesday when we heard the same gospel that seems like a whole different world than we live in now. Uh, but that, this gospel asking us to not pray, not do acts of charity, uh, not fast so that we can be seen, but instead so that we can serve our Father in heaven, this is the gospel we heard then. Some might say, some have said that the the words of our Lord that you should not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing are the only commandments of Christ that we have always as Christians consistently followed in the church. But the question I want to ask us a little bit is, how does this teach us today about not being a hypocrite, not uh, doing things for show? Um, the word hypocrite literally means uh, an actor, somebody who speaks from behind a mask, somebody who speaks and acts in a way different than who they are behind. And hypocrisy is, is in some ways, hypocrisy is the cardinal sin that we have, uh, in public at least, in, in what we call an age of authenticity, where you're supposed to match, and yet we don't match. We're all hypocrites. If we think we're not hypocrites in something, then we're not quite paying attention. Christ is telling us in this gospel to try to make our outsides match our insides, to try to uh, make sure that when we do our good works, when we do good deeds, that we're doing them for some other reason than to appear to be righteous. And that gets complicated. Uh, one of my friends had a very lively Facebook conversation a week or so ago, and like him, I was at uh, protesting for Black Lives Matter, and we were asking about, he was asking about, how do we protest, how do we post about that protest in such a way that we're not making ourselves the center of the protest? There's something different with protesting compared to, say, prayer or charity, where being public is part of the protest, and some of our friends pushed back on the need to make sure that people saw how important protesting was. And on the other hand, I, I, I saw myself people who were um, spending most of their time at the protest taking selfies of themselves at a protest. You see the issue, perhaps. What are you a hypocrite about? For all of us, there is a, a gap, a gap between who we want to be, who we would like to be, our ideal of who we are hoping to become in our journey in faith, and and who we currently are. And bringing those two things into harmony, that's, that's the work of our lives. That's the work of becoming a saint individually and collectively in this journey of our pilgrim church. And as in all things, we're, we're much more likely to see other people's gaps other people's discordant notes between who they say they are and who they are than we are to see our own. But we might ask for some grace to figure out, well, how, where are my gaps? Where are my discordant notes? Where am I not yet the person Christ is calling me to be or the person that others think I am? Does that mean we should sit home and do nothing? Does that mean we should be quiet? Does that mean we should hide our prayer, hide our fasting, hide our acts of good works and charity? Nope. But it means figuring out how and why we're doing them. And there's a clue in our gospel, but it's a hidden clue in some ways. So if you look at the, the reading for today from Matthew and the reading from Ash Wednesday, it's from chapter 6. And the verses are 1 to 6 and then 16 to 18. So what did they skip over in order to provide these three texts about charity, fasting, and prayer? Well, they skipped over, so to speak, the Our Father. Now that should be our clue. The In verses 7 through 15 is when in the Gospel of Matthew, Christ gives the Our Father to his disciples. And the Our Father is a prayer for forgiveness forgiving our trespasses at the same time we forgive the trespasses, the hypocrisies, the gaps in others' journeys. It asks for help with our, our daily bread and to get through these days. 
but it's also the prayer above all others for the coming of God's kingdom. That can be our focus. So in a world like ours, where we see so clearly how much we still need more work, how much the gap exists between the world that God dreams of for us and the world in which we are living, this is a time to perhaps get back in touch with that gap and to ask how we can make a difference putting the reign of God at the center rather than ourselves. The, when we look around at our world, when we look at COVID and all the people who have been hurt and all of the inequalities that have been exposed by this virus, when we look at, perhaps with fresh eyes, perhaps with first eyes for some of us, how people of color in this country have been treated, how people of color in this country continue to be treated, how many people have died as a result of their race or their perceived race. This is a moment to ask perhaps how we are going to act to make God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven and to make that the focus of our lives rather than our own hopes or our own self-image. So I'd invite you today to think of today as another another Ash Wednesday, perhaps, a beginning of a new period of repentance for, for ourselves as individuals, for our church, for our parish, which was built on and with the labor of enslaved people, for our country, and to ask for the grace of getting more into harmony with what we know God calls us to be, and the letting go of our masks, the letting go of the things that make us hypocrites. If we do that, in the words of Christ, our Father who sees what it is hidden will repay us. And we're promised that God's kingdom will come. Today may be a day to keep praying for that fullness of Christ's kingdom.